The past 10 years has seen impressive progress in malaria control, including lower numbers of malaria cases, illnesses and deaths. But malaria remains a threat to more than 3 billion people and accounts for 7% of child deaths globally. The scale-up of bed nets and more effective malaria testing and medicines has allowed some countries to move from controlling malaria to the goal of eliminating it altogether. Outside of Africa, malaria inflicts the heaviest toll in Asia and the Pacific. WHO reports that 20 countries in Asia and the Pacific still have significant levels of malaria. Countries in the region are undergoing rapid economic growth and working together to address common challenges. One such challenge is malaria. The combined funding needs for malaria control across the region is estimated to be about 3 billion US dollars per year. Although 10 countries have successfully reduced malaria by more than half in the past decade, it continues to be a barrier to economic development and tourism. As malaria is beaten back, it's becoming increasingly concentrated in poor and rural communities and among people living in hard-to-reach areas such as border regions. Two to three years ago, malaria spread widely in this area. I came to work here every day. The community requested a malaria clinic in the area, so together we built this clinic without using any government funding. We asked for donations and support from villagers and local politicians. The treatment is free of charge. Every step of the testing and treatment are free. It is not that villagers do not care about getting malaria. They know that it can be life-threatening. But sometimes they forget about prevention. There are also villagers who go into the forest to look for vegetables. In these places, they are highly exposed to malaria. I look after her, stay with her at the hospital, fed her and wiped her with a damp cloth. Her father went to work, but I had to stop working. I knew that I had malaria after only a day. I felt cold and was shivering, so I went to see the doctor. I had my blood tested, and when it was found that I had malaria, I stayed in hospital and took medicine. I stayed in hospital for about three days. We have excellent tools today for fighting malaria. We have indoor residual spraying and insecticide-treated bed nets uh, that can last more than three years. We have wonderful rapid diagnostic testing. We have very effective medicines. And yet, if we don't have adequate resources to roll out those interventions, then we won't reach the ambitious goals that we've set for ourselves. That said, we do have specific technical challenges as well. Probably the greatest of those is resistance to artemisinins, which is uh, the key component of artemisinin-based combination therapy. And resistance to this class of antimalarials has emerged in the greater Mekong subregion. So we have identified resistance in Cambodia, Myanmar, Thailand, and Vietnam. And a huge amount of effort is being done right now by WHO, the countries, and a number of partners to contain that resistance problem and make sure that it doesn't spread further and jeopardize progress across the Asia-Pacific region and worldwide. Sustainable financing is critical for malaria control. We've uh, gained a lot. Uh, we've had uh, great progress in all regions, including in the Asia-Pacific region. We have to maintain the gain. And uh, without sustainable financing, it will be difficult. And this is why it is important to um, keep on reminding people that uh, this is not time for us to, to relax. I can tell you that there is a very high level of political will and commitment. And uh, knowing that this will affect our own plan, our own vision, our own uh, growth strategy, uh, it is necessary for all of us in ASEAN and our external partners to come together and to secure support. To help reach regional consensus on how to tackle malaria in the Asia-Pacific, the Government of Australia has invited endemic and donor countries and other key actors to the region's first political summit on malaria. Well, Malaria 2012, Saving Lives in the Asia-Pacific, is really an important conference for us. Uh, in particular, we're interested in the issue of drug-resistant malaria. That is becoming a very important problem. If it breaks out, 
then we could really see global rates of uh, deaths from malaria rise. We really want to do something about it, and the key to getting something done about it is technical and political agreement about what to do. We should uh, uh, improve the level of uh, funding. We should improve political commitment to ensure that uh, the required resources are made available for malaria control in order to finish the job.